thanks so much. And I'm just so honored to be here and excited to have been one of the 100 people to have been picked for the Stone Soup for Sustainable World Life-Changing, Hero Life-Changing Stories of Young Heroes. And I would like to tell you my story about how I find them and how about how I founded my initiative, Lily's Plastic Pickup. So it all started way back in the year of 2015 when me and my grandpa, we were just walking for, um, to get some McDonald's for lunch when all of a sudden we just saw so much plastic that was discarded all over the road and this is a time they couldn't when I couldn't really count in Dutch very well so we decided that it would be a good idea to count all of the pieces of plastic that we found and this walk was at least about 15 or 10 minutes of walking and we counted 91 pieces of plastic in that short amount of time and that just shocked me so much so me and my grandpa or or as sometimes i like to call him my awilo um we started picking up the plastic and he told me that anything anything that falls on the ground or somehow makes way into the ocean it might take a day a week a month or even a whole year but it will still make its way into the ocean and into the plastic soup so not chicken soup or noodle soup it's plastic soup and that's definitely soup the soup that no one wants to drink and uh, when I sort of heard this story, I really wanted to do lots of research about it, and I did. And what I found out truly shocked me. So once people, so once someone um, th uh, discards plastic on the ground because it's made out of fossil fuels, which isn't really a natural material, it just stays there. It stays there and stays there until it reaches a point when it can't hold its physical form anymore. So it breaks down into tiny pieces called microplastic, or even smaller nanoplastic, or even smaller into picoplastic. But no one knows how small plastic can actually get because it's almost an endless cycle. And once um, all of these stages reach the ocean, lot more, um, more worse things will all start to happen. So the plankton, they start to eat, they start to eat the microplastic and because plankton, they're at almost at the very bottom of the food chain, fish start to eat the plankton, then a larger fish, then a larger fish, until, un, until we actually eat that fish. So then that technically means that the plastic is in us. And also another fun fact about plastic is that it gives animals the illusion that it's food, so then they eat it. And when they eat it, it makes them feel full. So unfortunately, it slowly starves them to death. But remember, this isn't only fish, it's all animals, from sheep to birds, to, um, to horses, to even camels. It's affecting all animals, and that is why plastic is one of the most deadly materials ever created. And I am also a youth ambassador for the Plastic Pollution Coalition, and they told me something that I would never forget that I would almost never forget. And it was the, far, the four, but now five R's. And they are recycle, renew, reuse, and refuse, and refill your reusable water bottle. And the refuse one, that is incredibly important because it's to refuse single-use plastic. And it's in the name, we only use it once. So all that work that put that is going into that one tiny fork that we use for that one piece of apple pie, is definitely not worth it. And I am also a youth and I'm also a youth ambassador for many other projects such as Youth Mundus. And Youth Mundus is a festival where the youth can express themselves through film, through, uh, through film, through art, through through photography, through music, through any means possible. And it was such an inspiring event. And I also hosted a panel for Amazon Watch, and it was just such a great festival. And next year might even be held in Los Angeles, so that's also good. And I also met Eco Shaker Giada, and um, we were supposed to do this year a big cleanup in Sardinia, but unfortunately, because of the now not so recent Corona crisis, that couldn't happen. But hopefully next year it can. And I am also. Um, um, and I was also representing Wildy uh, while I was speaking, I was also representing Wildy and Youth Mendes while I was speaking at the UN World Oceans Day and that was also just such an inspiring event. And I have also met Jane Goodall at least three times and, and a few facts about Jane, she is such an inspiring, amazing and just fun, and just fun overall person.
and she also taught me something that I think all activists should remember is that even though it might seem small or something that you do that you might just think oh it's just one thing how can this change but actually you're really helping save the world and this is my and this is also what I can uh, what I can give as as my advice and it is that even though something that you do might just feel like a drop in the ocean but what will the ocean be without any drops or without any water so that just shows how empowering how empowering the youth and us can be thank you